can we just take a minute to acknowledge how incredibly cool it is that we are looking at some of the members of society that we probably haven't appreciated nearly as much as we should as heroes right now. Because personally, I love that. We just got done talking about farmers and ranchers and, and some of the things that they do that we, like every, all 50 states looked at farmers and ranchers and said, yep, that's essential. And I think that that's obvious and anybody that would have asked that, hey, the people that grow our food, essential or non-essential? I'm going to go with essential. Like, it's a no-brainer, but the fact that it's being put front and center, I think is a fantastic thing for our society and a fantastic thing for us, and I'm hoping what it does is especially people that are kind of cut off from that agrarian society that they think their food comes from the supermarket, or at least that's how it plays out in their head as opposed to being grown by people, I think the fact that the supply chain does get a little bit interrupted might give them a real appreciation for people like our farmers and our ranchers that are out there growing the food every single day, putting food on America's tables. That's something that I think may be a big silver lining that comes out of this. Obviously, I'd rather it not happen that way. I'd rather this thing not be an issue. But if this is going to happen, that may be a really big silver lining to where people go, huh? So I guess the ground beef doesn't just show up at my grocery store. There are people actually involved in getting it there. It makes people think. It puts it at the forefront of their brain instead of it being an afterthought. I think that's a good thing. And I also think it's really cool that we're acknowledging some other people in our society that are doing amazing work right now. I mean, look at our doctors and nurses and the way that we're applauding them and, and trying to... I don't know how many people I've seen on social media go like, Hey, just so you know, because I have a lot of friends that are nurses. I'm a, I'm a cancer patient. <laughs> I don't know how many people uh, I have seen just go, Hey, I just want you to know that I'm praying for you. Uh, they're sending cards. They're saying, Hey, if there's anything I can do to help out, bring you some food. Uh, there's been such an outpouring of love and affection towards our medical staff, our doctors and nurses. That's a really good thing. And you know who else I've seen people talking about? Grocers. And people that are in charge of, I mean, even stock boys that really never get any kind of appreciation. The people that are making sure that the shelves are stocked, that are working overtime to make sure that people have a place to come where they can get food and get essentials. We're looking at those people as heroes and, and really should. And another one that's near and dear to my heart, truckers. Not only are truckers sort of the lifeblood of the conservative talk radio uh, stream, which obviously is important to me for very obvious reasons, also, I have truckers in my family, specifically my grandfather, who just celebrated his 70th birthday. And Papa, despite the fact that he's 70 and, and inside that window where he's at high risk, now he's taking precautions. He wears a mask. He, when he fills up or, or has to go out to deliver a package or anything, he's wearing gloves. He's sanitizing things. So he's being extra cautious. But think about this. A guy that is, by definition, in the high-risk area for this virus, and I'm sure that there's millions of other truckers out there doing exactly the same thing that are also at risk. They're like, you know what? It's important that I get out and do this because there are people that are relying on me. And he drives different things around the country. It changes. Usually he drives for Buffalo Rock. So, you know, just beverages, but still. Like the fact that we've got truckers out there making sure that our supply lines are working, making sure that people are getting food, they are really an unsung American hero, and I appreciate the work that they do, not just because my grandfather is one, because I was the same way before he became a trucker, but, I mean, God bless our truckers, and I personally feel a lot safer knowing that they're out there trying to make sure that people are getting the things that they need. And another thing, which is another one that I have a family tie into, teachers. I think because so many parents are having to homeschool their kids for the first time and looking at the material they have to go over and the work that they have to do, and I have some teacher friends that are talking to me about this, and my dad is a teacher, but of course he's retired, so he's not going through this. But I have a lot of teacher friends that are telling me, I'm getting so many letters, I'm getting thank you cards, I'm getting people call me up and they'll ask me questions about things, but at the end of the call, they'll just stop for a second and say, by the way, I really appreciate what you do. I, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So I really like the fact that we're really applauding teachers and acknowledging all the really hard work that they do throughout the year. They may not be working right now, but there are a lot of teachers that are even going above and beyond and having tutoring sessions with people virtually. 
to do their job. And so farmers, ranchers, doctors, nurses, grocers, truckers, teachers, utility workers. That's another one, especially in Alabama, where we just recently had a whole bunch of people in the state with power outages going out there, making sure because guys, how bad would this suck without Netflix? Really? Like being stuck in your house all day, all day no Netflix, uh, no Hulu. I actually don't even have Netflix anymore. I use Hulu and Disney Plus. But all our streaming services and the power. I remember when the power went out over here and I was like, oh gosh, this is going to suck if I'm stuck here for a couple of days with no power. But, you know, thank God for those people. And I like the fact that we are looking at normal working class Americans and applauding them as heroes. I think that's a practice that we should continue to do long after we're all out and resuming our normal lives. Because ultimately, I think for a long time in this country, we did look at those people as heroes, and we've kind of lost that a little bit. And I'd just like to say thank you to all of those people in those professions and some of the other ones that I'm sure I missed when it comes to essential workers. I thank you, and America thanks you. We appreciate what you do. And I think that there's, when it, when it comes to some of those professions, it would all do us a world of good to just remember to appreciate them and appreciate all the people that serve us kind of behind the scenes that we don't always necessarily know about or look at. You people make a difference. Your work is appreciated. And I think right now, this is a really good opportunity for America to acknowledge that. And I think that in a lot of ways they have, at least from what I've seen. And I hope that we don't forget that when we're all outside and, and resuming life as normal. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman. So now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.